This is a day in Bruges, an old, old town in Belgium. It is early morning. The sun has just risen behind the church steeple. Some people say Bruges looks like a painting from a fairy tale because all the buildings are so old. The town hall was built in 1420 and these homes across the street date from around 1500. It is Saturday. In Bruges this is a special day because the weekly market is held on Saturday. The farmer comes to town driving his horse along the old Dame Canal. These barges come to Bruges from Ostend Harbor. Barges carry much of the trade of Belgium. Coal and oil, grain and fertilizer, and many other goods. The canal on which they travel circles the city, and all the bridges must be cranked open to let the barge traffic pass. Through ancient gates come the merchants, some with horse and wagon, some with dog cart. In Belgium, dogs too must do hard work. The people of Bruges make great efforts to keep their old city spotlessly clean. The shop owners wash the floors and windows of their shops and scrub the sidewalks in front of them. The stone lions of Bruges get a new coat of paint. Even the pet dog gets an early morning bath. It's almost eight and time for school. In Belgium, they have school Saturday mornings too. On the way, the children cross the old Nepomuk Bridge, named for the statue of a saint. The older boys ride their bicycles to school. Now the barges are in the locks and the bridges are lowered again. The safety barriers are raised and the crowds in the outlying towns and the surrounding countryside, enter Bruges. Many of them have come on bicycles. Almost everyone in Belgium rides one. Soon the market square is crowded with shoppers. In the rest of Bruges, life goes on as usual. Most of the older houses have no running water and the housewives must use the hand pump in the street. They bring their dull knives to the knife grinder who comes once a week and works his way from house to house. The fruit vendor clangs his bell and calls out his wares. Because the cherry orchards are 40 miles away, he has come by truck. The vegetable peddler has his gardens near the town, so he came with a push cart. He too is headed for the market, but he sells some of his lettuce, carrots and chicory on the way. His Belgian shepherd dog helps him push the cart through the streets toward the market. The market of Bruges, just think. For 600 years, the townspeople and citizens of West Flanders have gathered here on market day just as they do now. Here they can buy almost anything, dainty handkerchiefs and kitchen pots, costume jewelry and finches which you find in almost every home. Linen and cotton cloth at bargain prices. Some make selling quite an art. This man sells his homemade sausage. And this one sells folding umbrellas for the ladies. And, of course, there is always time for a little gossiping and meeting friends, or just watching, just as they have done for centuries in the old market square at Bruges. 
with its towering belfry. In the afternoon, many market visitors join the tourists from foreign countries in a boat trip through Old Bruges. Because of its many narrow canals, the town has often been called the Venice of the North. Mr. Daniels, the Flemish guide, knows much about the city because he was born and raised in Bruges. Just listen. In the under one is the me bridge from 16th century, Moyes Restores now. You see first the statue of the Fleming painter, John van Eyck. Third the statue is the old painter's academy. You see it on your right side, a pelican house, 1634. You see This is one of the old age homes, paid for by the city, where each old lady has a tiny house all by herself. Rosary K, and at Francis is at the K de Roser. On your right side is an old Spanish palace, 16th century. Look first, you see it first, the tower of the Church Notre Dame. This is the tower of the Church of Notre Dame. It is 350 feet high and was completed in 1340. Near the bridges and in the courtyards clustered around the church, there are always painters at work. As the guide will tell you, this is a town for artists. Some of those who painted here centuries ago have become famous the world over. Their paintings are now priceless treasures. This painting by Hans Memling, who lived here 600 years ago, shows the then mayor of Bruges and his large family gathered in prayer around St. Christopher with the Christ child. Roger van der Weyden painted this Madonna. Jan van Eyck was famed for his portraits. This one is of his wife. This large painting is called the Madonna of Bishop van der Pele. It took van Eyck two years to finish it. And now our guide takes us to the Beguinage, a kind of cloister for lay sisters. It dates from the 12th century and is one of the most picturesque spots in Bruges. Near the Beguinage is a school for lace makers. Here small girls starting at the age of six learn how the famous Bruges lace is made. After instruction with giant bobbins and thick yarn, they first learn to make simple patterns using heavy thread. As they become more experienced, they work on more difficult patterns that require a greater number of bobbins and finer thread. As they work, the girls sing an old lace maker's song they have learned. Some of the girls will become real experts in the art of making lace. Here is a woman who has made lace all her life. Everybody in Bruges knows her as Old Sabine. At 95, she is the town's oldest lace maker. She never wears eyeglasses for her work. This is a lace piece Sabine has made. And now it is time to leave. The barges have unloaded their goods and move on. The visitors from out of town are leaving for home. Evening comes and Bruges is quiet again. The lamplighter makes his round. And another day has passed in the life of Bruges, an old, old town in Belgium. <laughs>